So we just got our September new cars issued back from the printer. It's full of good stuff, including drives of the new F-Type, the new Corvette, um, the new big pickup trucks from the Big Three, and uh, also the Range Rover Sport that I just drove in Wales. You know, we've been seeing a lot of these high horsepower SUVs, uh, cars that were never intended necessarily for, you know, on-road performance duty. But I have to say that the, uh, the Range Rover Sport is really, really good. It's got a tremendous amount of bandwidth, both on-road and off-road. I mean, what do you think about these things? I mean, you know, you look at it on a reasonable level and they're not reasonable. They're completely absurd. Right. Of course, they're, you know, 5,000 pound, uh, huge things. And you could, you could make a much quicker and more agile car just by uh, starting with a lighter base. But this is what the market wants. And we found a lot of good ones. Um, and you know, the days of it being a modified, you know, mud bogger are, are long since past. It's still heavy, but not as heavy. Good to see speed and handling be a cause. Tata's sister brand to uh, Land Rover is Jag, and we drove the F-Type. Uh, did everybody, you guys both got yeah. a chance to, I thought that thing was just unbelievable. It that was, is unexpected. Yeah, I mean, it was raw. It loved to go sideways. I love the noise it made. I just thought it was a real sports car. It makes an unbelievable amount of noise. So, I mean, we drove the V8S, so it was like the full bore, but that thing is insanely loud. I mean, gloriously so, but it's shocking that that could even pass right, any right. sort of drive-by regulation. It's so loud. It's insanely fast, too. It's quicker than the C7 Corvette. Uh, it doesn't have a manual transmission. That's a point against it. Uh, but still, there's a lot of entertainment there. You know, a fresh brand to the market. The thing that I like about the F-Type is that it sort of gives meaning and purpose to the rest of the line. You know, now the the XJ makes sense for the way it is. The XF certainly makes sense. There's an icon at the center of that brand now, the way 911 allows Porsche to do Cayenne or Pan American. Yeah, and it, and it just looks fantastic in person. Much better than in photo. Yeah. Really a, a, a it's nice- It's kind of stubby in photo. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It looks short and, and wide, and uh, it's not that. It has much more grace in person, but very purposeful, great looking car. You mentioned Corvette, and we're gonna get to that, but I wanna talk about another important General Motors product. You drove the Silverado. I did, all over Texas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we put it up against uh, F-150 and uh, Dodge Ram, of course. Sorry, Ram 1500. But it wasn't all V8s. No, it wasn't all V8s. You know, what we wanted to do was go against, you know, get the three, the three trucks at their biggest volume uh, arrangement. So that's a four-door V8, you know, a base level V8, um, where the real numbers are and where most of the market is. And Ford insisted uh, that they sell more EcoBoost uh, V6s than they do uh, the Coyote 5 liter. So we, we accepted that as their entry and uh, honestly it served them well. They took a second place in the Comparo behind the Silverado, but you know, they would have been third were it not for that motor. And you know, it's, it's the oldest one in the lineup or in that you know, three vehicle uh, grouping. They, they'll get all new uh, an all-new F-150 next year. So it was at something of a disadvantage, but you know, it's, yeah, it, it feels a little loose, like, you know, the doors flap a little bit, it's like a jittery ride, and um, the interior is not the quality it was, or, you know, rather the other two have really picked up their game, particularly right. General Motors, and so, yeah, Ford did not show as well as you might did have Did you thought. try that Silverado that we had in the office? I liked it, I was very impressed. The Ram's been my favorite for a long time, but it shows what careful tuning without benefit of a turbocharger, coil springs, or air springs can right. do. It rides great. GM's getting religious about weight, and you see that uh, throughout, and even in the trucks, and uh, the future trucks will be lighter. Uh, hopefully the SUV versions will be, but that pays off uh, uh, without yeah. having to, to pay for it. It's yeah. a money saver. It paid off huge in fuel economy, uh, which matched the EcoBoost. It's 400 pounds lighter than the Ram. And, you know, and at that point, that's its killer technology. You're helping your braking, your handling, your fuel economy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still 5,600 pounds. It's not a lightweight, um, but it still has all the capability too, so. You know, what's kind of impressed me lately is I haven't seen a dud come out of General Motors uh, in the past couple of years. It seems like they really figured out vehicle dynamics I don't know if it's at Milford Road, of course, uh, but 
you know, serious, serious weight targets and uh, focus on weight, serious focus on handling um, there, and vehicle integration, the cars and trucks really just function very well. And, uh, you know, we said that the ATS have handled the 3 Series, and it does. I can't wait for the CTS. It seems like sort of from the ZR1 CTS V forward, all these cars have been really, really well resolved. And I don't know if GM is getting the credit it deserves for putting out cars and trucks that you know, really handle great. Yeah, even like an Impala I know. has a really nice chassis. Um, ATS is obviously, as you mentioned, is great Corvette. C7, I got to drive it. I feel lucky that I got to drive it. I know you drove it hard and Casey tested it. But tell me what you think about it. It's world's better. It's a huge leap ahead. And uh, yeah, there's technology throughout, but it works together. The chassis, the powertrain, the electronics, they're all on the same page. And they're devoted to making a great car in the hands of uh, ordinary drivers all the way up to, to highly skilled drivers. It doesn't uh, hang you out. It's, it's there to help you. That E-dip is a lifesaver. That traction control system on the new products feeds a tire temperature. Yep. I mean, it's just, they're doing a lot of smart stuff. It's very smart. Uh, they didn't change the fundamental layout. Uh, that's sort of carry over, but I like the looks of it. I think it looks fresh. It's a resting on the road, uh, especially from the back. I don't see any Camaro there. I debate that with people that always bring that up. I think if the old buyers don't like the look of it, that's just fine. Yeah. That, you know, that is just fine in the long they, run. They need a new generation of douchebags yeah. to like that. The, the old guys are taking up C6s uh, because... Uh, Got around taillights. Yeah, they, they think that's it, but they haven't seen enough C7, they haven't driven it, and uh, they're going to need to make that switch uh, when they do. Uh, the aluminum structure is so much different, and it was a, a, a hydroformed before it was now. It a constant section before. Right? Yes, now it's got castings and extrusions and there's, there are huge increases in stiffness at uh, key places. And that pays off throughout, whether it's a convertible or a coupe, whether it's handling, ride, uh, interior quietness. Uh, it just makes a quality feel. They spent some weight on seats too. And there are electronic things, uh, displays and uh, better uh, infotainment. So all that adds weight. The, the right. EDIF adds weight. This is the first one we've seen with a slight Weight bias. It's very close to 50-50. To me, that's a good thing. Right. I don't buy the the 50-50 as the ultimate. It's really not. You want weight on the drive yeah. wheels. Yeah. Uh, Corvette's heading that way. Uh, I hope they get to mid-engine someday. <laughs> you know something we don't. <laughs> I'm praying for seeing. So that's our September new cars issue. We do it every year, and it's always a labor of love. Everything you need to know about the new car landscape is in there. Every model has some information on it. So it's on newsstands now. Check it out.